across the El Paso border, that's what I moved across I'm winning, you losing simply because you're snoozing off Walk inside a kid's bedroom, ask them who the boss Say the wrong thing, Steve Harvey, I'll tear your unit off Me, they wanna ostracize, interior is ostrich though Few things to learn about me, one thing you got to know I can't stop popping tags, I leave them all with shopping bags Proud of mass, I should ram it, baby girl, I got it bad what the testers say, tomorrow present yesterday All they wanted was residue, y'all can't front on my resume Man, I had the fan, I'm bopping, Lambo dropping Band, no busting, no discussion, rubber band the bands Hand in hand and cop it, when I had no option All my face is stocking, don't worry about us knocking We gon' spray the locks in, you see the camera flicker That's when the man is watching, but I got OJ popping Nigga, I'm Cameron Cochran Fuck is wrong with me, but wait, it just dawned on me. Just like Uncle O, I'm coming back for what belonged to me, man. We got nothing in common, the salmon glazing with honey. I'm chasing chicken, I'm for real, and it ain't even funny. I argue with fiends, rain, snow, days it was sunny. He wanted down for eight, but cheap nigga gave me a 20. What I've been dealing with, but still, I'm still killing shit. Dame J. Biggs on the boat, nigga, you feeling me? In my lifetime, I never been with the squealing shit. I am not monogamous, taking out esophagus. Girl, I ain't taking no hostages. Pardon this, miss, let me bar this. Give it right back, told her laid back. Baby, I'm from way back, looking on five at the Maybach. Wrist been rocky, shout ASAP. Come to work in a suit or a wave cap. Just straight facts. Me and Murder P and need a big payback. I was selling keys. Shout to every millionaire with a felony. Raise your glass, they crunchy like celery. Check out my melody, skip the beatbox. I was knocking CLP rock. I was waiting on Dre to make detox. Mad rapper D dot and Dame Dash we spot. One twelve street and the twelve twelve fleet had three rocks. Before that, I was carrying them with sheet rock. So please stop with your cheap shots. Watch with your G Shock. Now I got V-Box. Play the passenger. Take a girl and it'll be a massacre. When I'm stabbing her, yeah, she loving me. Charm grabbing her, but she more impressed at the cornbread lavender. All giddy, now she getting out of character. Told her, calm down, bitch, I embarrass you. Yeah, she like that. Close your eyelids. Now open up, girl, here come my kids. Know what I did? Look 12 in the face, said die pig. When I wig, yes, my nigga. Half man, half amazing, I'm a hybrid. All shucks now. I'm from uptown, nigga, better duck down. Turned into bucktown, enough is enough now. It's a doobie. She like, who he? I'm like, who me, bitch? I'm a movie. New movie, man. Maybe with Drewski, I need a lawn that's a booski. Hey boo, let me calm down. I don't say names. Ben Simmons, I don't play games. Just straight flames, range road, change lanes. I'm living, y'all maintain, goddamn. Gold chains all on the rock, fam. Killer got a high hand, y'all can't stop, can. Back to it is what it is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Florida, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. It will also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special pick when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, aka Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Philip was good, man. Feeling good, man. <laughs> you know what's crazy, man? I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. People just forget. Now, now you look like a genius. <laughs> all they doing is rebe- all I see in the clips today, or pardon me, last night and this morning, is Mace called it. <laughs> I'm going. Me and Nick are going on a hunt. <laughs> me and Nick are going on a hunt because I'm not gonna lie. All they saw is talking about. They talking about. <laughs> They said they's going to play back-to-back, Drake. And all types. <laughs> Me and Nick is going on a digital hunt yeah. and find exactly what episodes. If I got to go on YouTube myself and look at the bottom of the screen and see exactly when we was talking about this, when you abandoned yeah. the Chiefs, 
It's crazy, but okay. Congratulations. I want to hear about this ever again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, congratulations, man. Congratulations, yeah. man. But I'm, I'm going to find it, and I'm going to pull the clips it's up. It's crazy, though. Stat, the expert. That's crazy, the expert. man. expert. I'm going to get everything. I'm going to get everything. <laughs> I, mean, I, forget, I forget exactly Why everything. Why though, Cam? Why? <laughs> why? D. Allen, do you hear this? Why? I thought we was on good terms. No, why? Yeah. No, we is on good terms, but you know why? Because I'm from 40. If we, we got a problem. <laughs> I don't know what our problem is. We got a problem over there. We got to, this is what I got to do. It's just, it's installed pause inside of me. Pause. I have to do this for my personal satisfaction. Yeah. Well, go Cam. <laughs> <laughs> you got him to the Super Bowl. You know? <laughs> right, look, I got nine yeah. people all together to the Super Bowl. I hope y'all enjoyed yourself. All the winners on Underdog Fantasy. I seen a lot of winners yesterday thanking us. Code Cam was in the building. May said he wants a new code, Title Town. Yeah, I need a new code, <laughs> Nick. I need a new code. <laughs> And we need more money. We, <laughs> we need way more money. Now I'm agree with you. <laughs> if we call in, matter of fact, you was right. <laughs> we need way more money. Matter of fact, I think you guys was are right. doing three times better. You know. <laughs> I Shout out to Cold Cam, you yeah. know, in title yeah, town. Now that I think about it, Mace did call the yeah. Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I think we do got the experts up here. <laughs> I think, I think yeah. we need to renegotiate. You know? <laughs> so we're actually not even done talking about the Super Bowl yet. After the Chiefs beat the Niners, yeah. a lot of Niners players spoke out and said they didn't know about the playoff overtime rules. So one of the quotes somebody said, you said he said, you know what? I didn't realize the playoff rules were different in overtime. I assume you just want the ball to score a touchdown and win. I guess that's not the case. I don't totally know the strategy there. We hadn't talked about it. And another player said, we've talked about it all year. We talked about it in training camp about how the rules were different in regular season versus the playoffs. Every week of the playoffs, we talked about the overtime rules. So different players are saying different things. Does this sound like an excuse to you? It definitely sounds like an excuse, but I wouldn't know, you know? The champs don't need excuses, so I wouldn't know. You got to ask OJ, but he's not here. I don't want to talk behind your back, OJ, but, you know, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to come for you yesterday. <laughs> I tried to be the bigger person. Today, I'm going to be the smaller person. <laughs> Yeah, you had a little attitude with you yesterday, man. Yeah. I mean, how do you plan to go to the Super Bowl and don't know the rules? You know, Title Town, we planned for this. If you listen to Andy Reid, he'll tell you we were going over this in training camp. We already knew we would be here. You know, you don't buy, you buy your furs in the summer. You know you're going somewhere cold. You know what I'm saying? So we already knew. We were going here. We already knew we was going to win it all. I just had to set the fire under them. That that All that footage, Cam and Nick, you guys are out there trying to gather together. That was just me setting a fire under my team. Sometimes you have to do that. You have to tell them what you need to tell them to motivate the team. That's what makes you a good coach. But I'm going to let Cam talk, you know. Go ahead, Cam. It's on you. Nobody on the Chiefs knows you, Mason. <laughs> no, nobody knows you on the Chiefs, bro. You haven't got one call and say, yo, <laughs> yo good looking, Mason. If it wasn't for your motivation, we wouldn't have been able to do it. I have not seen one call from the Chiefs. I haven't seen you shout anybody out from the Chiefs. I'm going to bring his pops up here if you need me like to do that. that. I will, I will, I'm going to bring, I'm gonna bring I, that... Pause, oh, Daddy Mahomes up here. I would like, um, as far as the 49ers, hell yeah, this is an excuse. Cut the shit, bro. <laughs> Listen, first of all, everything y'all said don't even make sense. The first nigga the stat read about said, I assume you get a touchdown and then you win the game. Y'all didn't get a touchdown. So yeah. what are you talking about? First of all, even if you you didn't get a touchdown. Yeah, so, them rules don't apply to them. No, I'm saying even if it's the old rules. You didn't get a touchdown. <laughs> yeah. I get you know the old rules. It's still they might as well have played with the old rules. It didn't even matter if they changed the rules because you did not get a touchdown. So if you like, yo, I'm just assuming you get a touchdown and the game's over. You didn't get a touchdown. Y'all scored a field goal. Actually, the Kansas City Chiefs got a touchdown. Yeah. So even if they didn't change the rules 
and it was the old rules, you still lose. You're making up excuses. The second player just threw you under the bus. He said, we've been talking about this all year. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Mm -hmm. He's talking about training camp, preseason, during the season, during the playoffs. We all been talking about this, so I don't understand what the fuck either one of y'all are talking about. Well, second nigga, I don't know who it was. Sound like he making sense. He like, nah, we ain't going to do that and act like we don't know what we talking about. Right? This is what we not going to do. Yeah, this is what <laughs> happened when you come to training camp high. You don't know what's going on, you know? Yeah, so I seen this years ago. Um, Donovan McNabb was in the game. And it wasn't even games uh, to this magnitude. It, wasn't, it was a regular season game. And um, the game ended in a tie. And he was like, damn, I didn't even know. The football games can end in a tie. What, nigga? Like, yo, y'all niggas play football. I don't play professional football, and I know the rules. Like, yo, my nigga, there's no way a football casual such as myself should know the rules more than an NFL professional athlete. Stop capping, man. This makes sense. A lot of times it'll be people with excuses. You know, Floyd Mayweather beat up Manny Pacquiao. Nigga said, yo, I had a torn shoulder, rotate a cup. Niggas start making parts of their yeah. body up that was fucked up. Errol Spence uh, said his ribs was yeah, broken. Yeah, yeah. Errol Spence got to get eye surgery because he said he couldn't see the punches coming. So he just went and got eye <laughs> surgery. So now he going to be able to see. <laughs> That's what that, 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 he didn't say he said dude, that? He just got eye he surgery. He said he couldn't see the punches? He just got eye surgery because now he said, oh, now I'm going to be able to see shit. Boys <laughs> coming my way. This is the excuses <laughs> that people make. When you lose, you lose. Just say, yo, I lost. And they that's were the that. better team today. Yeah. Actually, they just didn't execute down the stretch. Pause. If you really think about it, that game was theirs. That's that's one of those games you don't want to lose. When you if you got pause blown out, then you understand that. But when you were right there, you were winning all half. You could they could have won that game. It was in their grasp. Yeah, I mean. It's, it wasn't an overtime, it was a spectacular game. It's a lot of fingers, not fingers to point, it's a lot of parts of the game where you could point out and say, damn, what if that nigga made the extra point? It yeah. would have been a four-point game instead of a three-point game. What if the ball didn't hit off the back of the 49ers foot? You know, it wasn't just the 49ers, the Kansas City Chiefs made turnovers too, you know, yeah. uncharacteristic turnovers. I think it was a great, but everybody, a lot of people wanted to see points put on the board. Even in the first half, I said to myself, I said, this is a great game because it's a great defensive game right now. It's spectacular. Yeah. You have to sometimes appreciate what teams do on defense. You know what I'm saying? So I think the biggest lose out of everything is Cal Shanahan. You know, this is three times mm -hmm. he had a 10-point lead in the Super Bowl and lost. Um, but what I will say to his credit, and two as a head coach, one as an offensive coordinator, but what I will say. What's to, his credit? If he lost three times ten by and he was up ten, what's, what credit are you gonna give him? He only lost to Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. Only two <laughs> people he lost. <laughs> it ain't like he lost right. to random niggas. <laughs> so I'm, it's like he lost to Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, look, I get what you said. Jordan to Kobe. If you, yeah. if, you if you gonna lose yeah. to anybody, it ain't he like lose to Clyde Drexler. Yeah, though. exactly. So that, okay, that's I the only credit that I'm gonna give him. You go against Tom Brady and you go against Patrick Mahomes. The game is never safe. So if if there's any silver lining in the rainbow. I guess you could give him that, but that's all I got for him. So every time we talk about the Chiefs now, it seems like we got to talk about Taylor Swift. So Brandon Marshall says that Taylor Swift actually got yay kicked out of this stadium. He said Kanye West pulls up to Vegas. He buys a ticket right in front of, and he said Katy Perry's booth, but then he corrected himself and said he meant to say Taylor Swift's booth. So every time Taylor would be shown on the Jumbotron, you would see yay right there. He said Taylor Swift gets pissed off. She boom, boom, makes a call to everybody involved. He gets kicked out the stadium. He was trying to leverage her celebrity. So based off of everything going on and then obviously always seeing Taylor Swift on the screen, what do you think about the situation? Is that true? That's what he said. Because you know if that's true, my son going to go crazy. Ye going to go crazy if that's the truth. <laughs> it seemed like he acts crazier with white people, though. What do you think, Cam? Stop playing with people. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to diss that young lady years ago, and she ain't forget about it. She don't want to be seen with you, let alone on the Super Bowl screen. That's like saying, 
I, I can't even think of an example because, you know, we don't even play niggas in the same building as us, yeah. let alone on the screen. That man got up there, embarrassed Taylor Swift at the awards, tried to go Beyonce crazy, say, yo, Beyonce's the real whatever, whatever. I don't remember the exact words or the verbiage, but, yo, the nigga, it's an unforgettable moment where he tried to do, um, or not tried to do, what he did to Taylor Swift. Right now, Taylor Swift, <clears throat> since that moment, became an astronomical superstar, um, awards on top of awards, record sales on top of record sales. Um, and now, to me, at this particular point, Taylor Swift is a bigger star than Kanye. So it's you about- You think so? I th yeah. yeah, I think so. I think so. Not because of Travis Kelsey or anything else. It's a reason the NFL is showing her 17 times a game each and every week. Um, that's just my opinion. I believe with all this stuff going on with Kanye now, uh, his celebrity kind of died down. Kanye just put an album out last week. I didn't even know. I didn't know how Kanye had an album out. It went mm -hmm. number one, though. I'm not saying it didn't. I'm just oh. saying I didn't know about it. But I got to protect my son. My son is going through things. I don't really give a fuck. You got to pray they for him. They called me to come to an event. I'm like, I'm good, man. Uh, no disrespect, but I ain't with the weirdo. You know, the thing about Kanye, and that's my dude, I'm not dissing him, is that in this room and nobody here, that's the coolest nigga in the world. Like, cameras come on, nigga turn into somebody totally different. I ain't with the camera, Kanye. My nephew. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? I'd never be around him with the camera, but that, that's it, what I'm with, trying to tell yeah, you. without the camera, there, he's 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 a cool individual. He's very cool, super duper cool. But look, I'm just saying, if in this particular situation, I understand where Taylor Swift is coming from. It's make a choice. It's either imagine and listen. If this is true, and I have no idea if none of this is true. If this is true. But everything that's been going on leading up to the Super Bowl, I'm talking about Taylor Swift involvement in the NFL or not involvement, showing her week to week to week to week. And she makes a call and says, I'm leaving if if you don't get out of here. He got to go. This is big business the you last You think they walked him out or carried him out? The reason why I'm not sure if this is true is because no, I think... No, let's, let's just say it is true. Let's just hypothetically... No, no, listen, I'm... I'm, I'm are you walking them out or no, you carrying them out? No, hold on. I'm, I'm getting kind of getting to what you're saying. All right. The reason I'm saying this, and I'm not sure, I would say this is probably 20... I'm not shitting on Brandon Marshall because that's my nigga too. But the reason why I don't know if this is true or not is not saying Brandon Marshall isn't a reliable source, but everybody know damn well we would have seen Kanye throwing a tantrum rolling around on the floor, grabbing cameras, knocking people. You better soda. not you touch me. me. Yeah, exactly. Oh, like. That's what I'm trying to say. Why is there no footage of that? I have a hard time believing. He would. I mean, he wouldn't want that footage out there, him being walked out. This is true, but you got to also remember, it's not just Taylor Swift. You got to remember who's putting the show on that's not fucking with him. Mm. Jay-Z's. This is Jay-Z's event. Mm. Jay-Z don't fuck with you neither at this particular time. So you got Taylor Swift and you got Jay-Z, and they say, make a decision. Decision was made if this is true. But I could see Kanye. I'm not saying he, because Kanye think any press, as long as he ain't doing nothing too crazy, it's good press. I see Kanye throwing a tantrum. Talking about niggas don't want me here. Yeah, fuck they told me I'm the biggest star in the world, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's true, but if it is true, I, I understand completely the business. Police are hard on white people. To be a guy that likes that's, white that's people actually, so much. That's actually crazy what you oh, just said. Yeah, it, it was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right. <laughs> no, the video he said he, he you want to be exiled or something like that. It was crazy. I, I never heard that. Listen, bro. He's all here. He's in the situation he's in right now for being poor. It's hard on white people. Yeah. I never seen a nigga lose a deal and lose $1.4 billion. <laughs> that goes to show, you know what I be saying? Like, yo, when nigga don't, if you don't got a billion in the bank, you're not a billion. Niggas talking about, yo, I'm a billionaire because my art. <laughs> My art is worth seven hundred million. <laughs> Yo, this sneaker deal I got is worth 
800 million. You lose one deal, you go from 1.9 billion to 400 million. If you don't got it in the bank, I don't count it. That's just my opinion on, on my, my, my real estate and my cars and my jewelry equal. Listen, man, this is in the bank. When you go to the bank, do it say a billion and when, the, when, you, when you print your receipt out. That's just how I feel about it. Okay. Now looking ahead to 2025, the Super Bowl will be held in New Orleans. The Niners are the favorites to win over the Chiefs already. Is this something that you can foresee or do you think the block is hot? The Niners won't even be there. You don't think so at all? Losing in the Super Bowl or losing in the championship does something to you. I think people discount the the potential depression you can go in when you lose a championship, especially on on a high stage. Maybe if you're in the YMCA where nobody sees you, it's like the guy that get knocked out in front of the world. That, that that's a devastating loss, you know. Especially if I if I woke up today as a 49er. I, I probably would I, w- I wouldn't be feeling so well, you know. So to just say that they're gonna get back to the championship, that's a long road. I mean, you're looking at you're looking at um Cam's guy got to come back. Pause. Joe Burrows. I don't see them just skipping over everybody. Once you lost with people, the the mentality changes. As you win with people, the the confidence grows. But when you lose with people. The mentality changes. Everybody in that locker room becomes a different person because people start dwelling on what I should have done better and next time I'm going to do this or next time I want the ball, pause or whatever it is. So the mentality of the whole team changes when you lose in the championship. Um, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't know if they're going to win or not, but I see them definitely making it to the NFC uh, conference game. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as Joe Burrows uh, is concerned, he's in the same division as Patrick Mahomes, so that wouldn't even that would be a Patrick Mahomes Joe Burrow situation. They wouldn't be in a San Francisco's way. I would say this to me: the momentum in the NFC goes to the Lions uh, next year. I think they built off what they did last year, built off what they did this year, and see the mistakes that the coach made and says we're ready to take it to the next step. The Lions were actually right there. And due to coaching mistakes or ego with the coach, it yeah. cost them a trip to the Super Bowl. Um, 49ers, they have a great team. I don't know about them being favored to come back next year. But look, uh, for those of you who too young to know, we've seen the Buffalo Bills get the four straight Super Bowls and lose. The 49ers were actually just in the Super Bowl uh, a year before last, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so... It's about them getting over the hump when you get to the Super Bowl pause. But pause them. If I'm looking, at, I'm sitting there looking at the NFC. I really, you know, fuck the Cowboys. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm, I'm really looking at who's a threat in the NFC. Uh, maybe the Eagles. The Eagles look so bad the this Eagles. year. They yeah. they look terrible. Uh, yeah, because those teams are coming back this, to make sure that they redeem themselves. So it's not just a walk in the park. That's what I'm really speaking to. Right. If I, but as far as my favorites in the NFC next year, <clears throat> I will say it's the 49ers and the Lions. As far as them winning the Super Bowl, because they're favorite, not just to be in the Super Bowl, to win the Super Bowl, I'm not jacking that. I'm definitely not jacking that. <laughs> And then people are saying that Lil Wayne should be the halftime performance. Do you guys think that this would be a good choice? Oh, that's a good, that's a really good one. I think Lil Wayne would do well at the Super Bowl. But I think um, Chris Brown would be more of my choice for the Super Bowl. No disrespect to Wheezy. They're going to be in New Orleans. I get it. You know, that's where he's from. So, uh, Wayne has a lot of hits, and not just a lot of hits. He has a lot of features. Uh, the list of people he could bring out uh, for rock and roll to R&B to a hot boys reunion if need be. Yeah, you're right. You know if it's saying? in New Orleans, it got to yeah. be Lil Wayne. Yeah, so and not just that. Lil Wayne actually is a great performer. Not only having hit songs, Lil Wayne is on stage with energy. He's jumping around. 
dreads are flying. Little Wayne is a rap, rock, and roll star. You know, he's really a rock star, bro. So for him being for it to be in New Orleans, um, I think I think that it'll be a really good look for Little Wayne to do it. You know, that's my little bro. I love him, and hopefully he'll get the opportunity. But who knows what the entertainment power gods are going to do <laughs> over there to put in the Super Bowl next year. And then after the clips went viral of the altercation between Travis Kelsey and Andy Reid, he did speak up and he said, he keeps me young. He tested that hip out. He caught me off balance. Normally, I'd give him a little bit, but I didn't have any feet under me. But the question still at hand is, do you think it's disrespectful for a player to yell at their coach like that, or you think it's not that big of a deal? And then thoughts on what Andy Reid had to say about it. I think if they they have that understanding, then it's all good. It's like, um, it's almost like, um, I don't want to say Swiss Beats and Alicia, but you get, you get what I'm telling you. Like when you saw that situation, I was definitely thinking, what is he doing? But as Cam gave us the backstory before that, that Andy Reeves did this to him a few weeks ago. So if they're holding each other accountable and that's the way that they communicate and everybody's clear on it, I don't really see anything wrong with it. It keeps everybody highly accountable. Yeah, I, I agree. Look, if this was happening week to week, if this was like a Draymond Green situation. Yeah, he starts slapping <laughs> Andy Reid, <laughs> then it's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know this, this, is, this, is, uh, this isn't like this was a regular season game or a game two of week two of the regular season. This is a, what a lot of people don't realize. And I didn't really, like I said, I say this all the time. I didn't really understand sports. So I stopped playing sports because you're so emotionally involved that you don't really understand what you're looking like from another person's perspective. Yeah. I'm pretty sure when Travis Kelsey did that to Andy Reid, he wasn't thinking about cameras. He wasn't thinking about who was looking. Yeah. He was thinking about trying to win the game. And it was just a situation where he wanted to be on the field. It was just a turnover. He felt if he was on the field, it wouldn't be a turnover. And he got emotional. Um, and he I, had the right to say that. You know how sometimes you're that close with people that you let them know. You're like, if I ever start tripping... Yeah. Slap me, nigga. Yeah, 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 absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. A hundred percent. That seemed like it was one yeah. of those situations. Yeah, but listen. I forget, remind me, no matter where we at, remind me. And that's what he did. Yeah, absolutely. But it's one of them situations as well. Look, you, you get the ball down. You got to remember the scenario he did that in. You're inside the 10-yard line. You're hearing the ball off to Pacheco, and he fumbles, yeah. and you wasn't on the field. I get that. Sometimes coaches, I understand they need to manage minutes, manage players, manage time, manage their health, et cetera, et cetera. Don't do that to me in the championship. Yeah. I play every play. Red zone. <laughs> yeah. I, red zone. Yeah, I don't, Especially yeah, in the red, red zone. Yeah. Do not take me out <laughs> unless I ask to be taken out. I Like, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, tough. I got Taylor Swift. Yeah. In the building. Yeah, not just that. She won the Grammy. I'm trying to come <laughs> home with the Super Bowl championship. So, I think it was running through falls, four people yeah. with one arm. Yeah. I'm that, like, even I know that. You don't do that. Yeah. Who, oh, um, Pacheco? Pacheco. Yeah. But even, I'm mean, like, back to, he was bugging. He didn't, they, that's what I'm saying about defense. Uh, 49ers had him in check a lot of times yesterday. Even McCaffrey, he had a decent game. He, he, he broke over for some plays, but they had him under check. He fumbled too. As well, McCaffrey, unlike, like, you know, uncharacteristic fumbles. But as far as back to Travis Kelsey, you've seen the determination this time towards the end of the game, right before uh, the touchdown in overtime. He, he ran through like four niggas yeah. <laughs> to get that first down. And that was determination. So, so when you see a play like that, you get why he was so upset, why I'm not on the field. I need to be on the field. If I'm not on the field, we're going to lose. And I bet, listen, me, and like I said, we always talk about our basketball shit. We never played on a level as high as these guys have ever played. But it's been times we've been taken out and niggas is looking at niggas like, what are you going to do? Are you going to suck me back in or not, yo? Yeah. You see, we going on a run. And then what happens also a lot of times when you're a starter, and I can't speak to football as much as basketball, 
But when you're a starter and you're blowing a team out, this is a different scenario, and the coach sits you down, you, and then let's say they, the next the other team starts coming back. Then they put you back in to get the lead back or maintain the lead that you have. Sometimes I want to have fun too. I'm, yeah. I'm not just here to keep the lead up all the time. When I get the wiggle, when I get to yeah, do this I with want, the basketball. I want to try, you know try something my yeah, balls. Yeah, I've been practicing. Yeah, I want to try something <laughs> new. They, the starters get no fun. They there to put your, bust your ass paws and then sit down and let the people that's not starting get minutes if you're blowing people out. Like you just said, what if it's new moves I want to try out, but I get flipped on if it don't work out if the game is close? Yeah. It's fucked up for niggas like me. <laughs> Superstars. We're going to switch gears to basketball real quick. So last week, Kobe Bryant's statue was unveiled. That will be placed outside of Crypto Arena. Vanessa Bryant said Kobe picked the pose, so if anyone has any issues with it, tough shit. It is what it is. So thoughts on her message and the new statue. First of all, the new statue is fire. Shout out to Kobe Bryant and the entire Bryant family, everyone in Lakerland. Just for that, um, in honoring Kobe, I think it was amazing that they the statue that they picked. You know, I was I was always thinking about what would they do? Would it be him standing on top of the um the desk when he got the championship? And that was the he picked a different one, but we gotta honor his wishes. I also thought it was um pretty cool, all of the people that showed up, you know, and I thought it was Kind of crazy that LeBron wasn't there, but that's another conversation. I don't want to get too much into that, but I thought that was highly wrong unless he got a great – he got to have a great excuse for that. How you know he wasn't on the road? Where was LeBron at? Was they home? Was the Lakers playing? Do you know where they was at? The man is – you know he's working, right? That's up to the Lakers. Where was he to playing at? I don't know. I'm just he's asking. Playing in, in L.A. I think you're making that up. I think no. you're just saying that. Do you, <laughs> give me the schedule. I want to see the schedule. For, I want to see the date. And Pull I wanna it see, up. Stat. I want to see. I want to actually Wasn't see. Wasn't they playing it? Austin Rivers was I, there. I, I, Austin Not Rivers? Austin Rivers. Austin Reeves okay, was there. Okay, Austin Reeves was the there. The rest of the Lakers was there. Okay, say no LeBron more. I don't know. I'm just there. asking because you be hating on the LeBron. Nah, nah. I, I'm holding them accountable. <laughs> okay, you know. Okay, I don't know. I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was. I was. I thought it was tacky. You know. You know. <laughs> yeah. I really thought it was yeah. tacky. This is for Mamba. You know. You don't show up for nobody. You got to show up for Mamba, man. I don't know how they did it in Ohio. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I never used to get it in Ohio. You missed out. You know what I'm saying? You missed out. <laughs> <laughs> we, did it, yeah. we did it big, boys. <laughs> yeah. We did it big. You know we still running, right? <laughs> you know we still out here, man. We still out here. I don't know if LeBron was there. What, what discussion, but if Austin and Reeves was there, then I guess they were home. But as far as the trophy's concerned, um, I see why Vanessa Bryant made that statement because it's not a um, traditional Kobe stance. You know, I would have liked the one one like this when he's like this. this. Yeah, I would have liked that trophy <laughs> like this. Me personally. But if that's what Kobe wanted and that's what he wanted his image to be, you got to respect the man's wishes. I'm happy he got a trophy. Yeah, like when you see the magic joint, magic is like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, you got Kareem like this. Yeah, you got yeah. Shaq on it. You know, that, that that's unforgettable when Kobe hits the... When he hits the game winner and does that. But look, if that's what Kobe wanted, um, I'm happy for him. I think it's well-deserved. Shout out to the Bryant family. And uh, I don't have a lot to say about it. I just wish uh, Kobe was still around to see it, man. Okay. The Celtics have the best record in the league right now at 41-12. and 12. Who do you think is the biggest contributor to the Celtics' success right now? Um... Ah, that's 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 um an interesting one because every time, like Killer said, every time Porzingis is healthy, it seems like he's the the major factor with this team. But then when you think about it, it looks like Jalen Brown to me is the one that's making all of the difference because you kind of you you're looking forward to Tatum getting thirty every night. Every night you're looking forward to him getting thirty, twenty six and 10 or whatever it is that he's contributing. But when Jalen Brown plays exceptionally well, that team becomes a whole different team, as well as Drew Holiday. When Drew Holiday is on and he's playing great, 
And now that they get, they got the other point guard that shaved his hair off, that had, that had his White. hairline, you know, in his White. headband. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's this a great team. I like that team. I like the balance of that team. But to answer the question, Jalen Brown. I don't really know, man. The Celtics are always in first and second in the last three, four, three years, four years. It's a playoff situation, not necessarily even a playoff situation. It's a championship. Um, we'll sit here and talk about the Celtics almost, and I'm not going to put them to the same degree as the Cowboys, but um, what I will say is I gave them a pass last year because you got a brand-new coach the year before last. He leaves, then you get a brand-new coach last year. Now you're in the second year of this guy coaching and people thinking that you should have won a championship a couple years ago. Uh, they should be in first and second place. They've been in first and second place throughout the season the last three years. It's about are you going to win the championship. Not get to the championship, win the championship. You got two players on your team that's going to be getting paid a total of over a half a billion dollars. Two players. Jalen mm-hmm. Brown just got $325 million. And if he got that, I have no idea what the fuck they're going to give Tatum. Might be close to $400 million. So you got two players that have potentially close to $700 million on your team. That screams championship. That doesn't scream, yo, who do you think is the biggest contributor to Nah, nigga, we need the championship, nigga. Yeah. Nigga, this uh, look up in the Raptors, nigga. You yeah, see what's this, up there, this right? This is where Bird and them was at. Yeah, man. this is Bill Russell. We McCain, don't. They, yeah, McCall, are y'all, gonna, are y'all nigga. gonna get one of them shits for seven hundred <laughs> million, nigga? Yeah, Paul Pierce. Mil- yeah, this is seven kg. This is seven hundred million yeah. we're spending on two niggas. What are we doing, Mark Jackson voice? Because yeah. at the end of the day, if you don't get a championship and you're paying two niggas seven hundred million dollars combined, that's a big problem for me. Is ownership. As ownership, I'm listening to, yo, we got to pay him this, the salary cap. And I know everybody's getting paid more because the salary cap is going up. But two niggas, $700 million, And I like what Mark Jackson said um, maybe about three weeks ago when in the offseason, Jason Tatum was like, everybody got to realize, calm down, we young, we got time. And Mark Jackson said, you don't got time. You have to capture the opportunity when it's there. He said, I played. Yeah. However many years, 15, 16 years, and been to one championship. Yeah, you get older, you might get hurt more, you know? Yeah, they're still in their 20s, so they like, calm down, nigga. It's all good. We gonna, we'll get one. Nah. But take advantage while the iron is hot. And um, I just didn't like that statement. But for me, it isn't about what they're doing in the regular season. It's not even about getting to Eastern Conference Championship. You've been in a championship, you lose. You've been in the Eastern Conference Finals last year, you lose. We pay a nigga $325 million. Jason Tatum's up for contract renegotiation. What are we doing? You got Now you got Porzingis there. You bring in Drew Holiday, who has championship experience. Does he still think they got time? That's a, bit, a better question. Right now, if we would ask Tatum, is he still saying we got time, or is his mindset to win right now? What do you think? I think if you ask him, He's going to say we wouldn't need to win now. But in his mind, he's like, we got time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, like, you know, I don't know if that's really his mindset. <laughs> Somebody might like Mark Jackson, might have pulled him to the side and say, yo, don't say that out loud. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a time. You could tell when people start going towards the championship, though. It's a, it's a certain swagger they start playing with, Riz, motion. And whatever you want to call it, there is just a certain tenacity and intentionalness that people start playing with, that they start making sure that things go certain ways. Like they start um, playing in a way to let you know I'm actually that much better than everybody else. They become vocal. They become better leaders. And all of that leads to championship. Every championship team you ever seen had that on it. And that's been my, 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 um, fight against the Celtics that they don't give me that. So it comes from Jalen Brown, but Jalen Brown is not the guy. So sometimes that don't translate into a championship. You need your best player to be the one that's the most bought in and the person that believes and push the envelope. Like, we're going to win if it's up to me. Give me the ball, 
when it gets crazy and we're going to win. Or some, well, that's up to Jalen Brown to be like, if you don't want to be the guy, maybe I should be. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're in, they're, they're in um, limbo about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think this is Tatum's team. I 100% agree mm -hmm. with you. But if you're not getting the job done, let me do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's um, like when Jason Terry took um, took over the series with, with Dallas and all of a sudden you got – Jason Terry and some little Spanish nigga running around dominating the finals. What was it? I forgot the nigga name. I know you're talking about, too. He, he was going crazy. Right. I was like, what? But it's certain things back to what I was saying yeah. real quick. It's just, it's, it's like you said, it's your mind state and what you say. Uh, and they should be the same, but mm -hmm. sometimes they're not. Like, I remember... uh. The Raptors giving DeMar DeRozan over $100 million at one yeah. particular time. Give him $100 million. The Raptors lose to Cleveland uh, in the playoffs. And this is fresh off a new contract. And they interview him and they say, how you feel about the loss? And DeMar DeRozan says, shit, if we had LeBron, we would win too. Bro. That was bro, crazy. Bro, we just gave you a hundred, and you supposed to be our LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> How are you saying that we had LeBron, we would win two? Ain't you supposed to be our LeBron for our team? <laughs> yeah. You don't say that after I just yeah. give you a hundred million. You know what? You know what yeah, happened? Yeah, after you supposed to be replacing Kawhi. No, that, that's what I was about to say. As yeah. soon as he said that, you got traded for Kawhi. I think yeah. said we don't need that type of energy yeah. around here. This is what we don't need. Because if I give you 100 and some change to be the man of this team, and you lose to LeBron and you say, nigga, we had him too. Nigga, fuck, you think we gonna lose? We're paying you to go to combat, to challenge LeBron. The general manager at the time, he's black, I can't think of his name. He said, we gotta change the culture around here. Yeah. Traded DeMar DeRozan for Kawhi, won a championship. Yeah, same team. Just a. A different heart. Right. And then before we go to break, Kyle Lowry has agreed on a contract buyout, clearing the way for him to sign with the Sixers for $2.8 million. Do you guys think he's going to be a good addition to the team? Mm. This makes this makes um the Sixers a better team, but a smaller team. And I don't know if a smaller team gets it done in the East Coast, you know. In the East Coast, is going to be hard to, to win against those taller teams because when it comes down to the playoffs and that perimeter defense, when you got somebody on your 6'7", and they switch off and the next person got you a 6'9", and you're 5'11", 6 feet, it's going to be hard to get a bucket off for seven games. You know, maybe one game you go crazy. Well, we saw that even with AI, you know, after a while. Those those taller guards are gonna be able to um, change those shots and things like that. So I think this made this made the um, Sixers a little bit better, a little bit deeper. But I don't think they needed this. Matter of fact, I'm not even gonna say it made them better. It didn't make them better because Melton, whoever that guard was, that's on the Sixers. He was already gonna do whatever um, Kyle Lowry was coming to do. But I think they the only reason they brought him there because they needed that that championship um, pedigree and understanding of how to approach the playoffs. I think that's the best thing he could bring to them. Niggas don't just need to start coaching that. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of niggas talking about you bring the championship mentality and the pedigree. <laughs> niggas just start need to start coaching. I forgot Chris Paul played for Golden State till I seen the nigga on the best of like Chris Paul still play basketball. I forgot. I forgot the niggas still even play for Golden State. Yeah. Look, Cal Lowry is a great talent or was a great talent. He had a tremendous run. And I know niggas be trying to grab these little chips before they shit is over with. Like, let me get everything I can get before time is up. I don't know their spending habits, how they budget their money, and so on and so forth. But outside of Udonis Haslam, I don't like seeing niggas with this. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes you got to wrap it up, man. <laughs> sometimes you got to know when it's, y'all had a great run. He had like, what, a 16-year, 17-year yeah. career? He had a great career. And I don't like niggas seeing, like Kyle Lowry, 
You don't like those last three trades of a nigga career to yeah, say, it's like, yo, he played for Portland. Yeah, yeah. You're like, nah, yeah. go back to the Raptors. Now and Larry remind me of like my man Larry. When Larry, we go to the gym and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's over, man. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> it's a dog, yeah. man. We can't. Put the camera on Larry. <laughs> Yo, Cal Larry. Cal Larry. Yo, Cal when, Larry. When Cam be, just violated. Yeah, when nigga, when you got sugar dugger beating you on one on ones and shit. Look, man, look, we know you had a great career, man. He can, so, still, <laughs> he can still play, though, killer. All right. Is he, is he ooh, Larry or Cal Larry? <laughs> not, not Larry. <laughs> Cal Larry can still play. If he was on, I mean, there's a few teams he could be great contributor on. If he was to go to Denver, he would be great backup point guard to, to Murray. All right, let's, let's run through it. Is, is he better than Donovan Mitchell? Donovan Mitchell, no. He better than Damian Lillard? Nope. Halliburton? Jalen Brunson? Trey Young? I'm just going through the guards on the East Coast. He'll hold his own against Trey Young. Oh, come on, nah, come on, mate. So that nigga Trey Young will run right past that fat nigga. Yeah, Yo, come on, man. Yeah, if he's fat, come he's on. over. If he's yeah, fat, he's over. Man. Come on, bro. If he fat, he's over. Get the fuck out of here, man. I'm come saying on. Trey Young don't do a lot. Trey. He just shoot it. Nah, Trey Young will throw it through a nigga legs. Don't stop. Don't do that. Don't act like Trey Young just shoot. Come on, bro. That man mixes too. That, now you're just looking for somebody. He, <laughs> is he, they got rid of him for Rosier. <laughs> I get that. Yeah, I'm looking at. I'm sitting there looking. I'm just. I'm just looking at the teams in the East Coast. I didn't even get to the West Coast. I ain't talking about Murray, John Morant. Yeah, John Morant. Yeah, yeah. Russell Westbrook. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Kyrie they should have traded him to Boston. He would be. He would be good on that team. Like, you know, get, get come in on you the like playoffs. Kyle Lowry, huh? <laughs> nah, <laughs> I actually don't. <laughs> I, I think Kyle Lowry had a great career, but um. I just think that it's time is coming when, and if you can grab any little bit of money while you're still here and grab it, just grab it. You know what I'm saying? You got to think about this. $2.8 million, it's probably $1.1 million. And you're not even talking about the cost of living. We're talking about taxes, work taxes, state taxes, all type of shit. So Cal Lowry's going to get out of here with $723,000 before the season's over. For the love of basketball. Just figure out what to do. What I would do if I was Kyle Lowry, I would start talking to management in Toronto. I did a lot for this city. I'm familiar. Yeah. And let me take a job. You know, I see Allen Iverson. And shout, shout out to my nigga Bob. That's you need my to nigga. work in the front office. Niggas got to yeah. stop working right. on the floor, right. bro. Look, we went to go see, <laughs> we went to go see Kansas State play uh, last year in the Final Four. And there was so many young niggas on their bench that didn't play basketball. They was with the with the pit, with the um, clipboard. They were sitting there getting water. They was helping out with the coach with schemes. And I'm saying this is when it starts. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 years old. Saying, I know I'm not making to the NBA. These <laughs> niggas out here still got a dream. Let me start putting my <laughs> knowledge to the test right now with yeah. 19, 20 years old so I could build a resume for myself instead of trying to fool myself and think that I'm going to the NBA. And that's how you build a resume. So when you finish college, you say, yeah. look, I was assistant, assistant Niggas coach. be going overseas yeah. and all that, wasting your time. Yeah. And, Listen, and, you can be a head coach by 30 years old mm -hmm. if you start now. Somebody's mm -hmm. listening to this, you're not going to make the NBA. You know it. Mm -hmm. Start coaching now. Right. Ask to, go to your coach and say, Listen, I know you got me on scholarship. How about if I be your assistant? Mm -hmm. Get I'm that scholarship playing. to somebody yeah, else. Yeah, I'm not playing anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you got them players. You recruiting them. behind my back anyway. Yeah, you you know, look, you know. Niggas look, you is know, in the portal and all like, that. You know who you are. You Listen, if you don't know who you are, let me tell you who you are, who needs to start the coaching job now. You're the player that when the team, your team is blowing them out and you get in with two minutes, the crowd go crazy like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you get a layup in. and niggas yeah. go, oh! oh! Oh, they so happy that you got in the game because you never get in the game. 
Now, and the crowd be like, oh, shit, nigga, got, he let Devin in. Devin's playing. Yo, he scored. He had two. Well, get out of here. That's you. Yeah. Start your coaching career now, bro, and build your resume up so that you can make these coaches make a hell of money. Or you might be nice and you got a lot of name. Cash A. You could cash out on it. As far like as what? Like, what was the guy named um, James Jones? That right, absolutely. Now he's, he's running the He's the general this. manager for Phoenix. Yeah, absolutely. he played with LeBron. Absolutely. He used that situation and just said, you know what? I'm not going to play from team to team. I'm going in the front office. And he did a great job That's so far. That's smart. Yeah. Elton Brand. Elton Brand, another one. It. Absolutely. Yeah. Elton Brand, absolutely. Brand Hill. Yep, Grant Hill as well. You gotta know. You gotta know when the road to the next to the next gig. It sounds like you should tell Kyle Lowry about it. Yeah, I thought that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> so Kyle Lowry, it's not I don't like you. It's time to get your next big bag. Go get your next big bag. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Argue with that, y'all. We're gonna go to break. When we return, we will talk about Clay Thompson. Don't go anywhere. She called this thing about toxic Four years and counting Got you feeling like an option Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about She wanna be free Away. I, I wish somebody told me the rules. Disagreements let her win, then it's cool. Even when I'm right to say about you. Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. Tonight, OKC will play the magic. Underdog fantasy has SGA at 31 and a half points. Do you have them higher or lower, Mace? I'm going higher. SGA is looking like a man on a mission. Pause. I'm going higher. Higher. Okay, Chet Holmgren is at seven rebounds. Do you have him higher or lower camp? I'm going to go higher. What's the... What's seven the rebounds, Chet. Seven rebounds, higher. Okay, and Apollo Bancaro is at six assists. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Lower, lower. I'm going to go lower as well. Yeah. Okay. Download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. So right now, a lot of eyes are on Clay Thompson regarding his minutes. Clay said he's open to a reduced role if he can stay with the Warriors. Do you guys think this is a good decision or do you think it might be time for Clay to start looking other places? He's willing to take less money, right? He said he's willing to stay with the Warriors at a lower role and take less money. How much less money is the question? That would be the, the number one question. Do you want Clay around? Not this Clay. I'm going to just go ahead and say it. Not this Clay. The One of the worst things you could do is dwindle at the place that known you as a great player. That's why Ewing got shipped to um, Seattle. This is why um, Iverson got sent to Detroit. You can't decline at a place that saw you play great because now they're going to be asking you to do things you're saying you're willing to do, but when it comes down to it behind their back, you're going to be like, yo, I'm not supposed to be coming off the bench for Kaminga. You get what I'm saying? I'm not supposed to be coming off the bench for Andrew Wiggins. What has he done? You know, it starts... It, that that loyalty to you makes it hard to build a team to where it should go. So this is why sometimes when it, when you're trying to do new things, you just got to do it with new people because it's going to be hard to tell that person because there's so many feelings involved, so many families. And we're not into families and all of that while we're on the court. We're just trying to win a game. I shouldn't have to consider your dad, your moms, your kids, and all that when we're just trying to win a game. That's a great point. 
I, I like that point of view. <laughs> no, seriously, it's, it's great. It's a great point because I didn't think about it like that because the whispers behind niggas' back got to be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> when niggas start whispering behind your back like, <laughs> fuck is this, this nigga stinking it up. I was watching Golden State over the weekend and, you know, we I missed probably the last – Four games, before, four or five games. I haven't seen the Golden State game before uh, Saturday night. And we was just talking about how Clay wasn't finishing the games. And I'm like, damn, Clay really isn't finishing the games. Clay was on the bench probably the last seven, eight minutes, maybe six, seven minutes of the game against the Phoenix Suns. And I'm like, you know, Clay, niggas, like, niggas, look, you got to think about it. Shooters going to shoot. You know, LeBron, one of his championships would not have happened without Ray Allen. Yeah. And when you're a three-point threat. You got to keep shooting. Definitely got to keep shooting, but they keep you on the court no matter what. Because you say, if this game is close, he has the potential to hit a three. That means they lost confidence in your jump shot if they're not even keeping you on the court in a close game. And I'm saying to myself, like, damn, man, this is fucked up. And then especially, this hurts because I like Clay. When, when you say that, like, when you say I'll, I'll take a lesser role or less money, it's just like when you got a girl and she ready to kick you out because you lost your job, like, we got bills to pay around. <laughs> like, you got to figure it out at your mother house. <laughs> you know, I, it's, it's, I don't like when I see niggas begging. It almost yeah. gives me Or a like a girl. You yeah, done yeah, with her, yeah, and yeah. She, now she yeah. want to do everything. Yeah, yeah I, I clean. Yeah. <laughs> I cook. I, I'm not comparing Clay to a girl, but I'm just saying, just scenario-wise. It's that scenario. Yeah, and but And it, it got to be weird even for, for um Steph, because him and Steph, he know... We both played at a high level together and we did great things together. But now I still want to win. And then you say you still want to win, but you're not playing like it. And I think that's the one thing, no matter what, though, that the reason why he'll take less money and won't go anywhere because that's the protection. Steph. Yeah. Steph is the. Stuff is the yeah. only is the protection, not to have him go nowhere. Mm -hmm. I know he's not contributing. I know he's not doing what he that's used to do. If Giannis got his brother yeah. on the team, <laughs> that's a fact. We can keep we, we can play. Get, that's a fact. <laughs> that's a fact. So I think no matter what, uh, you got stuff as as your sniper, your security, your your person yeah. who you could go to, uh, and it's twelve spots on the team. Clay going to stay in Golden State. Yeah. But I do like what you're saying as far as rebuilding and being a distraction. That's a lot of people were saying about Carmelo Anthony when he wasn't playing for a minute before he retired and he couldn't get a job. Um, a lot, You know, Carmelo, I seen him when he was on first take. He was saying that uh, there's no way that there's 480 better players than me in the world. It's just not. And it wasn't. Yeah, but what happens it's is it's four hundred and eighty other better attitudes, though. No, not not attitudes. What you said, it isn't attitudes. It's mm -hmm. it's damn. That's mellow. <laughs> you know, it's it's like damn. Yeah. Man, you're man, right. Man, I man. take that back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it looks weird yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. not defer to <laughs> mellow and letting some guy play that you know. Right. He got a he got twenty more years or fifteen more years, but he's nowhere near right as good, good as Melo. Was, but we got to give him a shot. shot. Absolutely. Look, we just seen it with with and and Nate stinking it up. Yeah, they definitely stinking it up. Yeah. But we just seen it with um Damian Lillard and, and Scoot Henderson. Yeah. You know, and and same thing with Simons and C J McCullough. They got rid of C J McCullough. To me, my opinion. Because they say Simons is on the rise. It, look, it might be I. Right. Yeah. And then Scoot Henderson. And, and they got to find out. Right, exactly. But when you got Carmelo Anthony, an all-time great one, of the great scorers in the NBA history, and he's playing, I don't know, I'm just using estimates, but he didn't have a job. Yeah. And they were saying, damn, when we give Melo nine minutes, that ain't even going to look right. I believe that's why a lot of teams, at the time, he ended up playing afterwards, but mm -hmm. they didn't want to do it because the respect level they have for Melo, they didn't want to put high. that. Yeah, they didn't want to put him in that position. Pause. 
And then before we end, it seems like Larsa Pippen and Marcus Jordan have called it quits after a year of dating. They both unfollowed each other and wiped pictures of each other off of their social medias. And then Larsa posted a little quote on her story. She said, the man you choose to be your partner affects everything in your life, your mental health, your peace of mind, your love inside you, your happiness, how you get through tragedies, your successes, how your children will be raised, and much more. Choose wisely. What? <laughs> what? How dare she have any rebuttal for taking a man 16 years younger than you and act like he's the problem? You're the adult. You... What are you talking about? I, I'm definitely not the one should be talking about this because I'm, I'm super insensitive on this topic. Just thinking about this, uh, I don't even need my notes for it. How you... Ain't you Scotty's ex-wife? Now you mad with Scott, the Pippins and the Jordans? Crazy. You got no future in Chicago. I hope you know that. <laughs> you mad with Batman and Robin and now baby Batman? What's going on, Larsa? Oh my goodness. This is this is embarrassing. This is this is really embarrassing. And allegedly is this kind of behavior that could make it troublesome even for your son playing basketball. So you heard a lot of things with your behavior. We don't know what Scotty did. We're not put, letting Scotty off the hook. You got Scotty walking around here looking like the future with, with dreads and black Nike ears. <laughs> I don't know what's in your box, but listen, we're praying for the Pippins. We're praying for the Jordans camp. You say something about this because I take him off the gram. How dare you erase his pictures? <laughs> That's the only reason we're talking about this. And I know Jordan is sitting somewhere right Yeah. Out of town, man. Tried to told you. <laughs> I tried to, to told, told you. you. It's crazy. <laughs> what was she thinking? What was you thinking anyway dating him? Your kids grew up with this boy. Your kids grew up with this boy. Somebody got to tell people the truth. You were already in violation talking about affecting your mental health. <laughs> you took a you were taking my opinion is you were taking advantage of this. You were taking advantage of him. You already took Scotty's pension. I'm I'm gonna go for I yeah. say more cuz I I I really don't like this situation. And then going to delete all his pictures like he's the problem. Yeah, absolutely. Your mental health. My mental know. health. And should my friends, should your friends follow your ex? All this kind of yeah, behavior. Right. Larsa, you're not 21. You're not Lori Harvey. You got to stop this. <laughs> Somebody got to tell you the <laughs> truth. You're not Lori Harvey. My goodness. And, can, and for all of the Pippins, I know that's your mom's listen. But sometimes we find out about our parents and we don't like what we find out. <laughs> I found out things about my parents I may not like, but they're still my parents. Stop embarrassing your children, allegedly. Sound like me today, man. I don't even, <laughs> <laughs> only got five words to say, man, to, to the, the people, not even the people. Don't be the next sucker. It's lollipop season. Pause. Because she'll find another one. Yeah. Uh, also, all I got to say is. Her uh, mental health. You young niggas, she praying on y'all. Don't be the next sucker. Period. <laughs> that five for don't be Get the that next sucker. Yeah. I need that yeah. on my hoodie. <laughs> yeah. Don't be, be the, the next, next sucker. sucker. Period. Pause. And there's really no pause because I'm dead serious. Yeah. Because you know why? We in an era where niggas look at shit as a stat. Yo, you know, I got, yo, yo, you know, I was, yeah, yo, bro, it's not a I'm stat. A it, Pippen, it, it's not a stat, bro. It's not a stat. It's not a stat, bro. Don't don't be the next one. It's not a stat. And Mace could I, I really don't have nothing to say. Mace, Mace said everything I would say. But yeah, to the next, to, 
to the next take his pitches down to the next 19 year old rapper to the next 23 year old basketball player to the next 25 year old football player don't be him don't because what happens is niggas think it's cool and be like yo no loss upstairs right yeah yo send a home in an uber when you done my nigga yeah about to and, drive and off. if you and if you got a kid, there's somebody to somebody saying, your wise may saying this. Listen, you don't tell me what to say. And check this out. If you got a young, any woman that's acting like she's for this, if your son comes home, he's 21 years old, and he brings a girl in and she act like she pregnant at 36, you're going to be saying, hold up. So don't act like you don't, you with this right now. Let me give you a great, that's a great example, right? Yeah. When I was younger, I think I probably, I don't, don't want to say exact age, but I had, I was, I was in my twenties, I believe. And I was dealing with, not even dealing with, you know, messing around with a female who was, uh, I say, I'm just using ages. Cause you know, you say the wrong age, chick hit me back. I was fucking with you when you was 23. So <laughs> what, what, what are you talking about? I'm just using this as a hypothetical age. Because I, if I say an age, my phone goes off. So when you was fucking with me, that, look, let's just say. My Don't mom, make yourself the story, sweetheart. Everything ain't about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For Everything real. is not about you. <laughs> for real. For real. For real, man. Because. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I was, I, so for instance, I was, let's say I was 27. I, I was dealing with this girl that was 47. And my mom, she's 20 years older than me. I remember, so she was around for a while. And she asked my mom, she said, yo, can I call you my mom? I said, my mom said, get the fuck out of here. The fuck you mean? <laughs> call me mom. <laughs> she, yeah. she said, my mom said, I yeah. should swing on you. <laughs> yeah. 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 My mom said, be happy I ain't swing on you yet. Because this yeah. is really molestation. What yeah, an older woman can mess a younger dude's um, life up the same way an older dude can mess a younger woman's life up because you put on a timing that they're not on that timing yet. They got to enjoy different things. Nobody want, nobody, no, no young guy should be dealing with them old eggs. Good job. I'm not that was <laughs> great. That was yeah. great advice. Make sure y'all always listen to them. <coughs> um, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you guys think about the situation too. Put it in the comments. We got to hear what you guys got to say. And it is what it is. Uh, Super uh, Max. Uh, like when they doing them two for five.